On this episode, I visit a mosque for the first time. It's amazing in here. Truly amazing. Crap is on the menu. How do you think that tastes, Nick? I don't think it tastes like crap. I'm on a boat, mother no, Not exactly. Well, maybe. I explore the Grand Bazaar, do a little wine tasting and syringe. Well, that's good. And see the ancient city of Ephesus only on sick travel destinations. I'm Nick Silvestri. I'm a filmmaker and a thrill seeker, and I'm spanning the globe in search of all the sickest travel destinations on the planet. This is the Nile right here. My goal, but right now, I'm in awe, is to connect with all the people and the cultures of the world. And that means meeting the locals, sampling their foods, and seeing the sights that they see every day. But that also means experiencing some of the things that the average person wouldn't, like insane stunts, strange foods, eyeballs, brain, it's all good. And unthinkable sights and moments that you only get when you travel the world. One of the very few times I'm awestruck when I go traveling. One man. What do you think about that? One planet. This is the epitome of that. One camera. The Hagia Sophia was made in the 800s. This mirab was made in the 19th century. This is Sick Travel Destinations. Ah, Turkey. Before even going, I had several people ask if that was even a real place. Then there were the supposed history buffs telling me that Istanbul was Constantinople, but couldn't tell me much about it after that. But fear not to all my Turkish friends, both from my childhood and the new ones I made on this incredible trip, for I will set the record straight and enlighten everyone on how a country can be as rich, rooted, and relished as Turkey. Today, modern-day Turkey sits in the middle of both Europe and Asia, and Anatolia was the name given to this land and the large peninsula that Turkey is made up of. It is said to be one of the most continuously inhabited regions in the world, dating as far back as 7500 BC, seeing several different empires ranging from ancient Greece to the Byzantine and the Ottoman empires. Even though this spans over 4,000 years, you can still see these influences happening modern day. And this isn't any more apparent than it is in Turkey's largest city, Istanbul. My journey starts in one of the world's oldest cities, where I'm joined by my fellow classmate and travel buddy, Dan wait, Cote. Wait, Yo, Turkey, son! <laughs> we will spend two nights in Istanbul, and then we will travel to the small beach community of Dikili to see an even more ancient side of this astonishing land, seeing the mountain village of Syringe and the ancient city of Ephesus. But first, like everyone else that travels, my journey starts in an airport. And this one looks more like a mall to me. They got Fendi over there, I'm gonna go. It's a Fendi. It's London's Heathrow. And don't let the fact that you have a two hour layover stop you from impulse buying. Oh no, part of this show is to give you some of my experiences concerning the culture and the land, but it's also a guide on how to travel smart. Calvin Klein, Chanel, Dior, Gucci, even though I did like that bag, they just don't make sense on your way to a country like Turkey. Especially this f***ing reef rider, man. We're in the UK, people, not the Bahamas. But we finally make it to the gate, and now we are on our way. We're waiting to board. You'll see me on the plane, and then you'll see me in Turkey. All right, Cody too. Yeah. All right. Now, you may not think like me, but I know for a fact, unless you plan on living in the airport for the next few weeks, you're gonna be hopping in a cab or finding some form, one way or another, of getting to your hotel. This is my time to truly gauge what my expectations are for the trip. And guess what? This cab ride hits me like a ton of bricks. So we just landed and uh, taxiing to the airport, I mean, to the hotel. You can tell I'm shot. The smells, the sweat dripping down my face, the cabbie and I discussing his gorgeous country. I can just throw everything I expected about Turkey right out the window. So I do. 
Just looking out at the Marmara Sea, I can see so many fleets of ships, mostly fishing, which gets me excited and expecting some of the freshest seafood I've had abroad thus far. The lush plant life, the bustling highway has really got me thinking. I know it's one of the original cities of the world, and I know Turkey sits on the cusps of two vast continents, but I imagine more desert and less vibrance. It seems the only thing I got right was the heat. Our cab reaches its final stop, Sultanahmet, the old city of Istanbul. If you've never seen the city before, this is probably the best place to lay your head, since it's in the middle of all the awesome attractions Istanbul has to offer. A minute walk away from the Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia, and tram stations that take you everywhere else you need to be when visiting this amazing city. Now once again, I guess you can consider this a guide show. And I know we aren't all the same, but lavish and luxurious lifestyles, they're just not for me. I'll save that for when I hit the lotto. So when I tell you I picked this hotel for the location and the most simplest of necessities, I'm not kidding. If I wanted to feel like I was in comfy New Jersey when taking a shower, I wouldn't have traveled halfway across the world to connect with this incredible culture. And that's why I keep it simple. Free breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and a fare of about 16 US a night? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing living on a budget, and traveling on one is even more fulfilling because you get to do so much more with yourself outside of the hotel. I didn't come here for Turkish TV, or to lay in bed all day. Turkish tea, the delights, and the sights. That's why I'm in Istanbul, so the Mavionor guest house was a perfect fit, accommodating backpackers and wanderers like me since the late 90s. The guest house is close to all the action, and did I say a great rate? Yeah. The owner Ilker takes us to the rooftop where we get a 360 view of Sultana Met. And isn't it lovely? And we have, every Wednesday, we have some small bazaar here. Okay. If you want, you can take some fresh fruit there and you can put the kitchen. Oh, that's cool. Next up, a light show and a bridge, all in one. I enter the Blue Mosque and sustainability for the ages. We're in Turkey, Istanbul to be exact. Now we planned our first night to be rather lax, and I know what you're thinking. Come on, Nick. This is sick travel destinations. What's so sick about chilling out your first night? The producer sort of agreed with you, but I went against their wishes anyway, and I feel like my plan played out perfectly, as you're going to see over the course of the show. Sometimes the best thing to do on your first night is to explore, and that's exactly what we did. We began to walk, thinking we knew where we were going. We had no f***ing clue. But somehow, it seemed like we knew all along. Or maybe, like two moths flying about, we were attracted to the bright and beautiful effervescent LED lights and stopped walking. Right here, where we got a light show from a unique source. A bridge. The Bosphorus Bridge. Connecting Europe and Asia and giving so many people in the city a simple, but amazing form of entertainment at night. Now, thanks to video magic and a special thing we call time lapse, I'm going to show this 20 minute process in less than one. Now, we were left to do, the only thing left to do, once you've discovered that you're on the complete opposite side of the city as your hotel, hail a cab. Luckily, in Istanbul, it's rather simple. Cabbies are always looking for customers, and ours was even looking to do some knowledge with us as well about this stunning scene also known as Istanbul After Hours. Absolutely amazing. With day one in the books, things were only looking up from here, literally. And upon tilting my head back a little bit more, I can see the Blue Mosque also known as the Sultan Ahmed Mosque and named after the great Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Ahmed I. This mosque is still used today as one of Istanbul's nine major mosques, but more popularly as a tourist attraction. Completed in 1616, the mosque covers almost 650,000 cubic feet of space, including a beautiful courtyard and an immense praying area. Upon entering, I am in for a treat. So we're in the Blue Mosque, and they made us take our shoes off, which is custom. Uh, it's kind of an insult if you don't. And uh, it's amazing in here. More commonly known as the Blue Mosque for the blue tiles on its walls and domes, the interior is nothing less than stunning, with an amazing array of Islamic architecture and artwork. When we went to Spain, we uh, 
we saw a lot of the Moorish um, architecture and artwork that has some Islamic roots in this. Completely Moorish. Is like, <laughs> this is the epitome of that. Right now, I'm in awe. The uh, intricacy of all the artwork on the ceilings is amazing. This is insane. Truly insane. Awesome lighting provided mainly by the sun and this incredible chandelier. This is crazy right here. Massive columns traveling up 130 feet just put you in perspective as to how little you really are. Another thing I gotta say is prayer time in here must be crazy because look how big the platform is for prayer. Like this where we are is where just the tourists and the, the viewers can see. But beyond this little barricade is where all the prayer goes on. And um, it's a big section of rug. So hold on, here's, here's where we're allowed. And here is where they won't let you because it's safe. Alright, so I'm gonna wrap it up here, take some pictures, and then uh, probably see us at the Hagia Sophia. Peace. We then make our way across the Sultanahmet Square to one of the oldest buildings in the city, the Hagia Sophia. Considering their histories, I would have to say that both Islamic and Christians have had their fair share of disputes. But when learning that this enormous structure housed both religions at one time or another during its 1500 year existence, I was pretty shocked. But then I got to thinking, why knock it down and start all over again? That would be a waste. So they did the right thing, the smart thing. Paint over the walls, add some of their decor and shit, you got a mosque. Since its dedication in 360 AD and its completion in 537 AD, it was a cathedral of Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. I got this notion upon entering the building. It's kind of Byzantine. I was gonna say that, yeah. It looks like it's Hagia Sophia is actually Byzantine, from what it looks like. I see some pictures of Christ and all that. So. For a short period of time between 1204 and 1261, it was converted to a Roman Catholic cathedral due to those nasty crusades, and then continued as a Byzantine landmark until 1453 when Sultan Mehmed II, aka Mehmed the Conqueror, ruler of the Muslim Ottoman Empire, invaded and ordered the cathedral to be converted into a mosque. Lots and lots of gold leaf, that's uh... It's Byzantine all the way, so this is insane. Check this out. You tell me, sense of respect or a slap in the face to take an iconic religious structure, one of an empire that you just conquered and converted? I'd rather that than knock it down. That's the crazy thing about all this is like, it started out Byzantine and it became Muslim. And um, it just shows you how the recycling of space is always, it always happens, always. And same is true in the oldest city in the world, so. Now, a museum, this awesome structure showcases the best of both worlds and all the history these bricks hold, which is some 2,000 years worth. This structure is so massive. They must be uh, refurbishing the top dome right there because it seems like a lot of the gold leaf has been cleaned. It looks real bright and vibrant. This looks bigger than the Blue Moss. Yeah, it's maybe not way nicer than the Blue Moss, but it's a lot older. Pretty damn sick if you ask me. Coming up, more sick history, a sweating hole, and a cruise on the mighty Bosphorus.